Hey, everybody, and welcome to this super duper exciting web event that we've got planned for you this afternoon. We've got a really, really special guest um, who I'll introduce in just a moment. I just want to do some housekeeping first of all. So this is a deep dive into Clarity. So we're going to be here for, for a while. Feel free to dip in and dip out. Um, probably stay involved, but if you need to head away at one o'clock, or sorry, at one hour in, then please you know, head away. But we're going to be staying behind, staying here to answer your questions, getting heavily involved and, and, and really getting into the nuts and bolts of this. So if you want to stay behind, then we'd love to see you stay behind. Now, this is all about creating an impact. It's creating an impact for you and, and for your firm. It's also about creating an impact for your clients and helping them create a more scalable, sustainable business. And it's also about creating a bigger impact in the world, leaving a legacy. You will leave a legacy. What type of legacy will you leave is the important question. So I want to get straight into it. Um, we are, um, if you've, we're going to have lots of Q&As as we go through. Please feel free to interrupt. Amy is going to be uh, moderating the questions. So hi, Amy. Um, she's going to be uh, interrupting Paul and myself. We do tend to talk a lot. Together, we're probably going to talk even more. So we do need controlling, and Amy's here to control us. If you've got a question, just type it in the chat box. We'll get to it, and we'll answer your questions as we go through. It'll also be great just so that I understand if you're able to use the chat box. If you can just type in now and say hi, let us know where you're calling in from, and we'd love to, to hear what, what uh, oh, so I can see it's, it's flashing already. So excellent. Some people know how to use that chat box. It's down the bottom if you, if you're, if you don't know. So just type in the chat box, say hi to us and where you're calling from and what, it's, what, what you're doing today, that will be great. Um, so I'm gonna kick off. Uh, my name is Ainsley Damery and I am the founder and grandly titles, uh, entitled CEO of Clarity. So I'm gonna be taking you through a really big deep dive into Clarity today and showing you how it fits within your firm's uh, existing services or how we can actually add and create some massive impact on top of that and add massive value to your clients. I am joined by one of my heroes. I've known this guy for quite a while. He is, I suppose, I've, I've, been, I've called him the godfather of accounting. He has been a massive influence to us. Firm of the Future was my first introduction to Paul many, many years ago. And we certainly built the blueprint of my accounting firm on the back of, of that. We tried to become the firm of what it should be, the firm of now, because the future was a long time ago, so it should be the firm of now. But Paul has had a massive influence on the accounting industry, and he was the first uh, recipient of Accounting Web's uh, at the outstanding contribution to the profession, and it's so, so well deserved. Paul has obviously gone on to other things now and is in creating even more of an impact. So Paul, can you just say hi and, and introduce yourself? I certainly could, Ainsley. Thank you very much. And thank you, everybody, for joining me. But Ainsley and Amy, thank you so much for having me. Ainsley, I'll tell you what, why don't I just uh, share my screen for a second? If, if you, oh, uh, there we go. It's going to stop uh, your screen for just a minute. And uh, what I'm going to do down here is uh, because I, when I saw your invitation, um, I, I saw that it said, you know, Godfather. And I instantly thought of Marlon Brando and all of, all of that kind of thing. Um, and just to prove that you were saying the right thing, this was actually the citation. And I mean, how cool is it uh, to get this, you know, in the, the first one? And you can see right down the bottom there, it was considered by many to be the godfather of, of, uh, of practice development. And, uh, you know, bang, and they said, you know, the fingerprints are all over uh, the practice and excellence program. And I think part of the reason for that, and uh, some of you may remember this, uh, way back in 1992, I created a thing uh, called the Accountants Bootcamp. And Ainsley, as you remember, uh, we had some 17,700 uh, accountants come through that, uh, that process uh, or process. For those of you joining us from America, I noticed there's a lot of guys from America. By the way, that reminds me, um, at the moment, we're seeing that you're on the, uh, on the chat and you're seeing, sending it to us as in all panelists. When you get on the chat, just make sure you use the drop down which says all panelists and attendees so that everybody else uh, can see where you're from. So in any event, uh, Ainsley, yes. Uh, so uh, that's where that uh, godfather term comes from. Uh, and what I was going to say was that uh, uh, all of the people that I meet and every week uh, people still say they, they were at that boot camp or such and such a boot camp and every single one of them says it changed my life. 
And that's just you know, an, an incredible kind of thing to be a part of. And one of the reasons that I'm here today is because that continues. And some of the great stuff that Ainsley is doing, and we're so happy to be part of it, is actually changing lives in an even more important way. So Ainsley, thanks so much for having me and for everybody around the world. Thanks so much for being here as well. Well, I, I can't wait, Paul, because I, I, I've, you know, we normally have a, a we've, we've done web events uh, together in the past, um, but this is kind of something, it, I think this is going to be special. So I hope everybody really, really enjoys it. It's, it's going to be good fun. So tune in for the ride. Okay, let me go back to my screen um, and we can uh, deftly move quickly on. So a little bit about a background to me, if you don't really know a, a huge amount about me, I actually, um, although I'm uh, leading a tech company and a, a global platform that's empowering accountants to help small businesses worldwide, I actually come uh, from an accounting background myself. Before that, I started life in small business. My dad started his own small business when I was quite young. He left the corporate world uh, quite early, and I noticed very early on the change in family dynamics when, we, when he moved from a, an employed role to, to a self-employed role. And although his business was, was successful, we very uh, quickly got to see the challenges that he was facing with cash, with customers, getting and keeping customers, with team. And, and, you know, small business is a lonely place. Most of his friends were employed, and so he didn't really have somebody to talk to about the issues and challenges he was facing. And those of his friends that weren't employed were, uh, there's a big PR game going on, and you probably can't admit failure or can't admit weaknesses. And so small business owners don't tend to share the issues and challenges they're facing. And this is where us as a, as, a, as a profession can really come to the fore and to be able to, to help dramatically by being that sounding board, by being that friend, by being that trusted person to be able to share issues and challenges with. Now, I uh, started my uh, working life with KPMG, started in the exciting world of audit and quickly moved on to transaction services. Um, and from there, I left and joined a regional firm in the UK, which became a niche business advisory practice. So, when I'm talking to you today about business advisory, it's coming from a place of knowledge and coming from a place of failure, I suppose, and all the issues and challenges that we faced and, and wanted to overcome. We were very early adopters of cloud technology back to probably 2009, 10. And it was very clear from an early stage, it was about technology, not for technology's sake, but technology as an enabler, how we were going to be able to use technology to deliver added value services and a better customer experience to our clients. So it was much more about how we could use technology. Now, we were lucky to win a number of awards internationally and nationally for the way we did business. And I sold that business last year to Crow, which is one of the largest accounting firms in the UK. And that was so that I could focus on clarity. And clarity was all about us making a bigger impact, making a, a, a dramatic uh, impact, not just for small businesses worldwide, but for the accounting and um, bookkeeping and advisory profession as well. And, and our purpose is and why we get out of bed is to give every small business owner around the world clarity, clarity so that they can create a better business for themselves, a better life for their family and team, and ultimately contribute towards creating a better world. Now, as an organization, we do that through our association and our support of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. I'm not going to go too heavily into the UN SDGs now. Paul is going to show us how the UN SDGs fit into everything we're talking about today and how you can work with the UN SDGs to create a massive legacy going forward. We do, uh, uh, sorry, we support the UN SDGs through our close partnership with Buy One, Give One. And Paul, again, if you want to stay behind, we can talk through a lot about the nitty gritty of, of how we work with, the, with Buy One, Give One to, to make a massive difference on the world and, and to help support the world. And every interaction that happens that you have with us, so any client that you put on, your, on our system, any sign up on our system, every time somebody does something with Clarity, we actually make an impact on the world. And at the end of this, I'm going to show you how we do that specifically. Paul, you were going to jump in and interrupt at that point. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was just, yeah, I got it. I'm just going to say, uh, you know, it's great to... Uh, uh, acknowledge the, the, the way you're doing this with the global goals. As we'll discover uh, later on, I'm going to take you through why these things are, I think, one of the most important things to happen to our world and indeed to business. But uh, more on that later on. I'm looking forward to diving deep with you now uh, into Clarity because it's an amazing solution for you. Fantastic. So I just want to put it into a little bit of context. 
and, and talk to you about why, why we put this in place and, and how important it is. I'm passionate about small business and I'm passionate about empowering entrepreneurs to change the world. Now, when Prince Charles spoke to the ICAEW, which is our uh, governing body, it's much like the CPAs in the US and um, CANNZ in, in, um, in the Southern Hemisphere, it's our professional body and the main professional body here. And when Prince Charles spoke to, to the ICAW, he said it was accountants that were going to save the world. And lots of people laughed at him. He was ac actually echoing a speech he gave 12 years previous, which was saying it was accountants who were going to help create a more scalable, sustainable world. And we certainly believe that to be the case. There are 168 million small businesses worldwide, and these are the registered small businesses. There's perhaps 600 million unregistered small businesses in, in addition to that. And they represent 95% of all businesses worldwide. They create jobs, they create wealth, they pay taxes, they build local communities, and they support the global and national economies of the world. So small business is hugely important. And when we look at those numbers for the US and the UK, for example, we see there's 5.7 million in the, in the UK and 30.2 million small businesses in the US. And if we look at Australia and New Zealand, it's about 2.7 million. Um, so we're talking massive, massive numbers. And in most Western economies, they represent 99.9% .9 of all businesses in those economies. In the UK, they employ 60% of all private sector employees, and that's 16.2 million people. In the US, that's 59 million people employed by small businesses. And we look at their contribution to the private sector. In the UK, they account for over 50% of the private sector turnover at 1.9 trillion. In the US, that's 5.9 trillion with 44%. Small business is huge business. And oftentimes when we think of small business, we don't realize how big small business is and how much of an impact it can make on the world. However, as a profession, we know the other side of the story too. And in the UK and the US, failure rates for small businesses are, are really, really bad. In fact, only four out of 10 businesses in the UK survives five years. And when we push those numbers out to 10 years, although more anecdotally, it's difficult to find the stats, we tend to typically see only 10 to 30% of businesses survive 10 years. And that's really shocking given where we are now in the world, and especially with, with the help that we can get from both a technological perspective and an advisory perspective. And so when we talk about saving the world and accountants being there to save the world, it's really, really important that we understand that this is about unleashing the superpowers that we have as advisors to small businesses. All the training, all the knowledge that we have is ideally salute, suited to being able to help small business owners with all their significant challenges. And even if the managers and partners within the firm appreciate the power that we have to be able to help small businesses, we really need to help the, the more junior team members to understand and give them the confidence to unleash their inbuilt superpowers to actually make a massive difference and to, to save this world and to save this planet. And we're going to talk about how we can do that in a number of ways throughout the session today. So I just wanted to give you a quick background into what small business owners are looking for from an accountant. And this was a survey that was done by Accounting Today last year, and it's pretty much the same the world over. The top five things, and you'll note that doing accounts and tax returns isn't on that list. Now, in fact, the list is quite a strong list. If you are to be a trusted, and, and take a step back, this isn't just for your top 20, 10 or 20% of your clients. We get that in an accounting firm, the top 10 or 20% of clients pay big fees, get big support, and get the help and the necessary and inherent advisory skills and support that they need. What we're talking about here is 100% of your clients. This is what 100% of your clients are looking for. They're looking for you to be a trusted advisor. And gosh, that's such a nebulous term and it's bandied around quite a bit. But we know this means being an intelligent friend, being there, being their sounding board, being there to, to listen to their challenges, their issues, and having that in a trusted environment where they can share openly the, the issues they're facing and, and not have you go blabbing to their friends. It's about responding quickly. And can you know now in the world, responding quickly is getting faster and faster. I'm talking fast, but crikey, when we look at how quickly our clients want you to respond. So they send you an email and how many of you have had a phone call from them 10 minutes later saying, oh, I sent you an email a while ago. So we know how quickly clients now want us to respond. It's obviously about understanding their industry and their business, clearly. 
And it's also being able to communicate clearly with them as non-accountants, whilst at the same time being affordable. Now, this is a massive ask for an accountant to be able to do all of these things with 100% of their clients. But that's the challenge and that's what's being asked of us. Our clients didn't go into business to do accounting and tax returns. They don't understand why we've done it. So far better that we be known for somebody who's proactively helping them with the things that they actually want in their business, rather than somebody who's doing something that they could, could quite easily just get rid of. It's also important to note that we aren't going to solve these five challenges by throwing more team resource at the issue, because that's going to affect the cost equation. We know that as accountants. This is about how we leverage the power of technology to be able to do the heavy lifting so that we can actually deliver what small business owners are actually looking for from us as an accountant. And I want to take you quickly through the challenges that they're facing. So I've worked with thousands of businesses all over the world, and we're not talking here about the macro factors. We're not talking about the economy. We're not talking about regulation. We're not talking about technology changes. We're talking about just the simple things that they have control over that they're facing problems with, and that we as accountants inherently have the skills to be able to help them with. And the first one is that business is complex. The world is complex. It's getting more so. What we don't need is more information. Our clients are drowning in information. They're starving for knowledge. What they need from us is an intelligent person who can interpret the data and give them valuable insights to be able to use in their business going forward. We also know that small business owners struggle with cash. They don't understand cash. They don't understand the difference between profit and cash. How often do they say to you when you show them a set of results and they say, I couldn't have made that money because where's all the cash gone? They don't understand cash flow management and they struggle to get access to the right type of cash as they grow. And we know that growing scaling businesses consume cash. So again, this is an invaluable way for us to be able to help our clients understand the difference between profit and cash. And for goodness sake, don't tick that exemption box. Don't prepare a cash flow statement. Please, if you just do one thing from today, can you make sure that every single one of your clients gets a cash flow statement at least once a year with the annual financial statements? And if you're involved in preparing regular management reporting, can you meet, please make sure that you include a cash flow statement and walk your clients through it? Help them understand the importance of operating cash because operating cash is the lifeblood of a business. We know this inherently. We just need to share it and be able to involve small businesses with it. Now, the next big challenge is that small business owners don't get their numbers. And that's twofold. One, only 20% of businesses actually receive regular management information. So that's proper management accounts on a regular basis, whether that's monthly or quarterly. And even if they do receive those management accounts, how accurate are they really? Do they look at revenue recognition, long-term contracts, work in progress adjustments with uh, inventory adjustments, you know, debtors, creditors, accruals, prepayments? Are we actually basing business decisions on inaccurate data or are we having access to the right data to make better business decisions? We can inherently help our clients be able to do that. It's also the clients don't understand their numbers. How often do they nod to you and glaze over when you talk through the accounts or say to you, well, we don't get numbers, that's why we have you. Now, Warren Buffett said accounting is the language of business. We're fluent in that language. We are doing a disservice to our clients if we're not walking them through their accounts, helping them understand the impact and the implications of those accounts, how they fit together, and the impact of financial decisions they take, because they need to understand when they're not sitting down with us, what impact their decisions are gonna have on profit and cash. And finally, it's planning. How many clients actually plan? My clients who spend more time planning their holiday than they did in their business. Can you just think about how much involved goes involved in planning a holiday, researching with your, with your friends, talking to them about where they've gone, looking at TripAdvisor, planning the currency, the budget, where are you gonna stay, backfilling that, how are you gonna get the time off, who's gonna look after the kids and the, and the, and, and, and the dogs, how are you gonna get somebody to cover your workflow, how are you gonna buy the currency if you're going abroad, all that planning that goes involved in a holiday, yet in business, they just fly by the seat of their pants. Now, I don't know why they do that. Possibly because they've left corporate and they're fed up of strategy, execution, implementation, targets, and, and, and monitoring, and they go into business and they're going to do it differently and they're going to have fun. Or maybe they just say, actually, I don't know what's going to happen in six months, let alone 12 months or 18 months, so why should I get involved in planning? Well, we know as accountants, that's just rubbish. We know the importance of, of planning. We know 
that even though the plan may change when it hits a customer, we know it's important to understand how the model is built together, how it fits together, how it actually all works, what happens if we look at different scenarios, we have an idea of the actions we might take. It's much like the military. You know, they, they plan an operation really, really carefully. It's guaranteed that that's gonna change when they hit the ground, but they have at least considered the implications. And again, as accountants, we inherently know this, we have the skills to be able to simply do this and to be able to really drive small business growth. So I'd love for you to put in, your, in the chat box, what challenges your clients face? Are these things that you do and work with your clients on? Are you just working with your top 10 or 20%? Or are you doing this for all your client base, for 100% of, of your clients and leveraging the power of technology to do that? So interact with us, get involved, and, and uh, just type those in the chat box. That would be quite cool. Now, quickly, the challenges that we see, particularly that we face in, in the accounting world, and I'm not going to go through all of these because you get these. We've seen how... Uh, the, you know, the significant downward pressure on pricing for compliance services in the past, but we're now seeing that in advisory too. So we're seeing one man and one woman bands setting up in their back bedrooms. We're seeing them using the Philippines or India for outsourcing and offshoring. We're seeing them connecting to all the various cloud apps. And we're seeing them now not just deliver accounts and tax returns cheaply, but delivering business advisory cheaply too. So we're competing against that and we need to understand and, and, and work through how we're going to actually to deal with that and make a massive impact and, and leverage the power of technology. You'll see also the move to, in the UK, it's making tax digital, but worldwide it's the digitalization of tax. And this is having a massive impact. And we see so often at various events that we go to, the talk is about moving from compliance to advisory. Well, I don't think compliance is ever dead. I don't think it's going to be dead. I think MTD and the digitalization of tax will will mean that we're gonna to have to work more with our clients to make sure that they're filing the right information first time and getting it data in right first time. And I think that's gonna become more, I think this is how we have compliance and advisory, how we embed advisory into everything we do. And we know how difficult it is to scale advisory if you've tried to do that. Well, we've got just the solution for you and we're gonna deep dive into that right now. So if you've got any questions, then. On, on what we've just said, please, please ask. I can see there's lots of chat going on and I can see Paul's engaging with, with the team. Um, and Amy, I'm expecting you to interrupt me whenever you need to. Great, so let's get a deep dive into Clarity. We're gonna do this live. So I do have some backup slides if, if technology fails, but we seem to be on a good connection at the moment. So I'm excited. What we're looking at primarily here is three big things. We're looking at how we can help our clients understand their numbers better and how small improvements in those numbers can make a massive difference to their business. We're gonna see how we can develop a step-by-step -step business development program and create an action plan for them to be able to build a world-class business. And we're also going to be able to see how we can create an environment which gives them the strongest ability to access the right cash and funding at the right time to be able to help their business to grow and scale or, or to exit if that's appropriate for the business. So, if you just bear with me, I'm going to switch screens and I'm going to go live and show you Clarity and deep dive into Clarity in real time. And just to be clear, right, this, is the, this is live, right? This is uh, live, live, live. Live, live, live. So uh, <laughs> awesome. what do they say about not working with children, animals and technology live? <laughs> and what do they say about not being in the hotel foyer uh, with uh, all sorts of things going in the background? Because <laughs> I'm heading to the airport in just a little while, heading back to Singapore. But uh, hopefully it's going okay. Fantastic. So I'm just hopefully sharing my screen and you can see it there. Um, Clarity has it. built mobile. Yeah. Fantastic. So Clarity has built mobile first. So it works really, really well on a... Uh, tablet, it works really well on an iPad, even a phone, obviously, depending on the screen size. Um, and on desktop, it, it works fantastically well too. Slightly stretched, so I have kind of shrunk the screen a little bit for you here. The first screen you go into as an advisor is all your companies. And we're gonna see some really exciting developments coming up, up with particularly with Zero going forward with single sign-on, because that's gonna give us a far more uh, quick access to our clients very, very quickly and give us far more data on those clients in, in, our, in our primary screen. So exciting developments coming up. Uh, I should say, for those of you who don't already know, 
Clarity connects directly into QuickBooks online and to zero. So we have APIs with those two software providers, which obviously are, are, are the, the two largest cloud solutions worldwide. For those of your clients that aren't using QuickBooks or zero, they can, we can actually, uh, we have a manual data entry screen. So you can key in 17 numbers for two accounting periods. It takes about 10, 15 minutes tops. Um, it's a little bit of a pain, so it's much better if, they, if they're actually using a cloud application and uh, hopefully you'll see later on why that's not just important for clarity, but for other things too. Um, so it is possible to enter that data, but it just doesn't give you the richness of, of, of the connection. So what we're doing here is connecting into a dummy company. The data is dummy data. So you may as an accountant see some glaring inaccuracies in those numbers. Uh, if you want to type them into the chat box to show me you see them, then that's fantastic. If not, we'll just assume you know that this is dummy data um, and away we go. Now, what we're focusing in on the first screen you enter for the, for the client's company is the seven key numbers. And these are numbers that are really important to every single business. They affect not just the P&L, the balance sheet and the cash flow statements, but they also look at the, um, the efficiency of the organization. And if you think about, well, gross profit isn't too important to our business because we're a service business, we need to be thinking about that very carefully because we need to be understanding the true cost of sale. And in certain service businesses, the people cost is a cost of sale. And we may need to be discussing with our clients how we need to, to, to change that charter of accounts to accurately reflect a true cost of sale and a, and a, a true gross profit percentage. Um, so you can quite clearly see here revenue growth, and that's for obvious reasons. Revenue growth is very important to, to a business. Uh, not just for standing still, but for actually making a dramatic change in, in the bottom line and for, for pushing the business forward. Gross profit percentage is critical. So this is uh, a great understanding of the margins that the business owner is making. And we need to be talking to our clients about breaking that by, down by product or service line. Because, you know, the old 80-20 adage works for our clients too. Oftentimes, they're spending more of their effort and time on areas that perhaps aren't giving them the biggest uh, profit margin in percentage or in, in, in monetary terms. So again, a great number that we really need to drill into with our clients. Operating profit is obviously an important number, particularly for a valuation perspective and for funding. So we'll have a look at that. And revenue per employee. Wow, that covers a number of things. It covers the level of team that we have. It covers the efficiency of that team. And it also looks at the efficiencies and effectiveness of the processes within uh, the business itself. And as an accounting firm, we should be looking at 125 to 150 sterling that's so for in the us we're probably looking at 150 to 175 thousand dollars um those are you know a, a strong uh, revenue per employee number and if we're looking at our clients then we need to be understanding as well it's not an absolute number we need to be ensuring that that number is increasing and we need to be understanding where our clients fit in in in, in industries but as a rough rule of thumb uh, 100 to 150 thousand sterling is is a, is a good place to be so that's uh we're looking at maybe 125 to 160, 70 thousand dollars. It's a really strong place to be for a business. Core cash target is the amount of money that a business should have in its bank account to be able to fund uh, future development, to be able to fund acquisitions, to be able to fund um, research, and to be able to distribute to 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 the team. So again, a, a great number to look at, and again, it's a target to hit for most small businesses. Won't have that money in the bank. Cash days is obviously the cash conversion cycle, so how quickly we cycle money within the business. For every pound we spend, how long does it take to come back into our account? And again, this number looks at work in progress days, inventory days, creditor days, debtor days. So again, great conversations from just one number. And also the business return. How effective is the business at, at, at providing a return for the business owner? And this is an adaptation on return on capital employed because we know for small businesses, most of them strip that money out. So seven key numbers. It shows how we did against the last quarter and how we're doing it in the current period. And when we're looking here- And Ainsley, can I, can I yeah. just say, I, I love the sentence underneath where it says key numbers. Just read that to us. It's a little bit small, but, but this is precisely what those of you joining us now will actually be saying, am I right? To the, the, yes. the thing that's right across the top of that screen. Absolutely. So these are your seven key numbers showing your essential information in a snapshot on profitability, cash flow, and business return. This is where your business is now. Remember, complexity 
doesn't lead to implementation, it actually kills implementation. What we're looking about here is simplicity. It's about making business simple. And if your role as an accountant is to make business complex, then clarity will not be yeah. for you. Yeah. And that's this what I about, loved. I mean, yeah. when you, exactly, when, uh, you know, when you first came out and said, this is making business simple, my reaction to that was that's exactly what needs to be done. And the beautiful thing about what, what, what's here is, you know, it's just a simple set of numbers which all accountants can work with. And then when you show them to your clients, like, it's like, oh my God, probably for some of them, that's going to be the first time they've ever seen the numbers presented that way. Exactly. Normally they're, 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 they're hidden in a, in a set of a 12 or 15 page set of financial statements, which they don't know where to look and don't know how to read. And we often don't take them through them. So this is really, really simple way of showing them the key, key numbers in their data. Now, because the API takes all the data through, it actually takes that data through on a, on a, a daily basis. And you can actually refresh that API anytime you want. We know that live data isn't perhaps always helpful when we're looking at numbers, particularly for our clients, because they're generally not up to date. So Clarity enables us to pick the last closed period. So the, if they've done a VAT return or a GST return, or if they've done um, some management accounts, or we know that they've done all, and put in all the, the relevant data, then we're good to go with that period. So this allows us to select the period that's actually real live data and proper data that's been reconciled. So we can say to our clients, this is where you are now, now let's look at the future. Where could we take this business? How could we make a difference to your business? And, and how could simple changes have a massive impact? We have been asked by members of the platform to date to have a change all button. So it changes all parameters in one go. So as you can see, it's a very simple slider. We can type the number in depending on what device we're working on. It's very simple for us to use. And what our members wanted at this point was they wanted to segment all their clients. You'll see from the pri pricing here that Clarity is very effective to get all your clients on board. This is not like other solutions which are quite costly. This is a really cost-effective solution for you to enable to put all your clients on Clarity. And what you can do is you can quickly put them all on and see what a 5% change makes to every single one of your clients. And that quickly helps you with segmentation. It shows you who needs an urgent conversation because perhaps they're at risk of moving to somebody else who's gonna give them this advice. Perhaps it's also uh, a way for you to see clients that maybe you hadn't thought about before that suddenly, oh my goodness, I didn't realize that small changes could make a massive difference to that client and I need to speak to them or I haven't spoken to them for a while. And maybe you can ring them up and say, oh, I've just been crunching your numbers and I can see that you're leaving some, some money on the table. Perhaps we could set up a meeting to discuss how I can help you fix that problem. It's also really great way for you to understand who in your team needs to be speaking to which client? Because perhaps if it's a 100,000 profit improvement, you may not want a frontline team member having that conversation with a client. Perhaps you'd rather a, a manager or a partner have that conversation. And perhaps if it's a, a larger client and it's only a 20K improvement, you may want a frontline team member. So this change all button gives you the ability to quickly see with your clients what the impact of moving all their numbers has on their profit and cash. However, what we really wanted it to be was a collaborative tool, a conversational piece, getting your clients thinking differently. How many of your clients say to you, oh, do you know what? I don't want to grow. I'm fine where I am. I'll stay where I am. Well, what they're really saying to you is they don't know how to manage and lead their existing team and they certainly don't want any more team members and they don't want to grow because they don't want to have more hassle. Well, what if you could show them just making tiny differences to each of their numbers could have a big difference on their bottom line then perhaps they'd be far more likely to get engaged with you on about actually not just growing for the sake of growth, but growing because it's profitable, scalable, sustainable growth. So what we wanted you to do was work through your client with each number. And for example, here with revenue, we can see that last time they grew by, last period they grew by 9%. So was 9% a one-off? Was that regular? Are we expecting them to grow this year by 9%? So maybe should we be pushing them to 10%? Because everybody can do 1% more. What if we could do even more? What if they could get it up to 12% growth? What would that do to their profit and cash? And we can quite clearly see here that that makes a 27,000 pounds profit difference. And obviously the same for cash, because in this instance, we're, it's all flowing to, to, the, to, to cash. We're seeing that's a, a big improvement in their bottom line just by making maybe just an additional 3% on what they've done previously. 
with gross profit here, we can see um, obviously this dummy data is a little bit wacky, so we'll just move it by 1% up to the, to the 100%, and we can't go higher than that. And obviously that has a tiny difference because we're not doing the full 1% here. You, you appreciate the, the systems cutting it off at the 100% GP margin here. So again, we can have a conversation with our client around GP. Maybe we're saying to them here, we need to reclassify some of their costs because even if they're a service industry, they should have true costs of, of sale here. Again, operating profit, a great one. Looking at overheads, perhaps we could shave 5%. Have we done a cost audit? We may not have done that for a long period of time. Maybe we're just incurring these costs that are wasteful. We only want to be, we don't cut costs for the sake of cost, cost, cost cutting. But what we do is we want to get rid of wasteful costs. Those costs that aren't generating any revenue, aren't, aren't contributing to the bottom line. So how can we do that and what does that do to profit and cash? Revenue per employee is a great one. So obviously this, this business is stonking. It's, it's obviously a tech business, much maybe like Clarity because their revenue per employee is colossal. So maybe we don't need to employ anybody else. Maybe we can still stick with one employee. What would that do to our profit and cash? Because whenever we look at revenue growth figures, we're, we're assuming employee costs are going to increase the same way. So, so what could we do here? So a great way for us to show, again, a massive impact. And unfortunately here, cash days is, is, is crazy. Uh, but, you know, what happens even if we could make some small difference? It's, it's not going to make massive differences here because it's a negative number. But let me just chuck it in because I want to show you in the action plan how this kicks out some, some really important points. But again, a great conversation with your clients to be able to show them what the difference in, in, in cash flow is and, and how we can actually make a massive difference to, to, to our cash flow um, and, and the importance of, of cash days and, and how we need to drive that number down. So again, wonderful to be able to flick through these and then see but some small changes to the business, how they can have a massive impact on our bottom line by just making those very simple changes to this business. Hi, Amy. Hi, I'm just going to interrupt if I may. I've had a couple of questions. Um, so you've gone through um, yourself already, but it's just five out of the seven um, key numbers that you can change using the sliding scale. So I um, just had a question about around those. And then we've had a couple more questions. Um, so do we have to sign up all our clients or can we just select some of them? Um, so it'd be cool to um, just discuss around that a little bit more and also about um, access. So do you, do you, we talked about it being a collaborative tool, but do you have to give um, your clients full access to the platform and a sure. lot of restrictions around that? Okay, fine. So the seven key numbers, five of them are levers, two are results numbers. So those are just the effects of all the other five numbers that we can play with. So that's why we're only moving five out of the seven rather than all seven. Um, can you put just some of your clients on? Absolutely. This is a completely flexible tool. This is built by accountants for accountants. We've been in practice. We've used tech. We've struggled with tech. This is our solution, how we would want it in our accounting firm and how it would really, really drive and help us to be able to make a massive difference in our firm and actually properly leverage technology. So this is completely flexible tool built for you. So yes, you can just put 10 of your clients on. The other question, Amy, was last one, sorry. Oh, geez, it was on mute. Um, it was about um, access. So do you have to give your oh, yeah. clients full access to the, to the clarity? Okay, plan? thanks. Uh, yeah. So some of our clients, some of our members are using this as a collaborative tool. And that's what we had initially intended it to be because it's very tactile when you're using an iPad. The client, you can give it to them, involve them in it. Um, and they can have a sense of control over their numbers as well. So it was envisaged as a collaborative tool, but I know certain of, of our members are using it as their own resource, their own internal um, way of doing business and keeping it behind the, the curtains as it were. And uh, look, there's no right or wrong. You, you, need to, you need to, technology needs to solve a problem for you. And it needs to do that in a way that works for you. And it's no good us shoehorning it in and telling you this is the way you must use this. This is how it works for you. So if you want to use it as a collaborative tool, great. If you want to use it as your own behind the scenes tool, that's great too. Okay, so we can quickly see just with the client and like, if we think about this way, so this is built for the entire team. But if I were a manager and partner, and you know what we're like, we're flying from meeting to meeting, we haven't had time to prepare, we might look at this tool and snort, oh, this is a bit too basic and simple to work with our clients on. But if I'm racing from one meeting to another and I haven't had time to prepare, this gives me an ideal framework to be able to have a powerful conversation with my clients. So whilst it might need to be built with me in mind, I can certainly see how I would be able to use this with my clients and have been able to actually make a, a strong and powerful conversation with them. It's also built for the entire team as well. But 
just, just, just to put that in, into play. And we can quickly see, depending on the length of conversation, because a manager and partner will have a longer conversation around these numbers and possibly a more powerful no conversation, but at least it's getting all your team talking to all your clients, delivering what your clients are looking for, which is helping growing their business. So it's a great tool for everybody within the firm. Now, the next question your clients are going to say when you say to you, when you say to them is, look, just some small changes to, to your, your business can have this difference to your bottom line. And they're going to go, great, Ainsley, how do I do that? Well, quite simply, we've built an action plan for your team to be able to work with and work through with your small business clients. And again, sorry, it's this Wi-Fi is a little bit slow here, so we're building up. Again, we've been adapting very quickly to what our, our members are requesting because this is software as a service. We're a cloud service too, and we're pushing updates every night um, live. And what they wanted was a delete all tasks button here so that if it were a manager or partner that were having this powerful conversation with the client, they might want to look like they've been prompted by the system to ask questions. So they might want to start with a blank canvas to be able to work through. But what we've done here is we've built discussion points so that your entire team is able to have conversations with the clients. Because what we didn't want is for us to say to a client, well, how are we going to increase your revenue from 350 to 392? And for them to look at our team and say, well, I have no clue. How do you think I should do it? And for my team to be able to then go, oh, I don't know either. And then that stops the conversation. We wanted to give powerful discussion points so that they didn't feel lost and that they were able to have a valuable conversation. So these are prompts. They can all be edited. They can be deleted individually or in total, and they can be um, moved around and, 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 and completely flexible. But again, it's just discussion points. So for each of the levers, we've given four or five points that your team can have conversations with the client on. So you're going to increase your revenue from 350 to 390. That's an increase on 3% in the prior year. How do you think you're going to do that? And if the client says, I haven't got a clue, well, then your team could say, well, you could sell more to existing customers. How would you do that? And so we can have a discussion about how they would go about selling more. And maybe the, the client will say, oh, actually, I'm going to a trade fair next month. And then we can talk around how they could better promote that, how they're going to engage with people at the trade fair or, or whatever. In fact, oftentimes your clients will have the answers. They just haven't had the time to stand back and think about it. And when you actually ask them, they'll probably know the answer. And so you can record their answers here. For each of these tasks, as I said, we can edit them and we can create a very simple who, what, when action plan. So who's going to do what by when. And in fact, if you take nothing else out of today, please, in future, don't take long minutes, meeting notes. All you want to do is record the actions, whether that's internally or externally. That's who's going to do what by when. So a great way of helping accountability both internally and externally. So we can set a responsibility here and we can set a deadline date here. And again, the system has a task management if you want to allow your clients to have easy access to this so we can see who's completed that task and, and when it was completed. Um, obviously, the report, this, this can be downloaded, it can be PDF'd, it can be emailed out, it can be shared amongst the team, or it can be stored on Clarity and everybody can have access to Clarity and use it collaboratively as well. Now, not only have we put in points here for your team to be able to understand how to have conversations and to fire these changes within the client's organization, we've also put in uh, tips for them to be able to talk to your clients about your existing compliance services, your existing apps that you use, and how they can make the next steps to actually develop a better business. So we talk to them about budgeting. Do you have a budget for the next 12 months, for example? What's your bookkeeping looking like? Do we need to help you with bookkeeping? Are we not getting valuable information? Because if we see that the numbers are rubbish at the start, that again is a valuable conversation point to be able to say to the client, we need to be leveraging the power of cloud technology here. We need you to be creating a single source of truth for this data. This needs to be where everything comes from because we're going to be building extra uh, connectivities and, and apps on top of this. So we need this to be right. How can we help you do that? Not just from a digitalization of tax, but about better data for better business decisions. We've also got points here on um, how do you have regular management reporting? For example, do you need to install Fathom here? Do we need to look with you and using floats and fluidly for getting accurate cash flow projections? And all the other apps see how this becomes a really good gateway, a gateway to, to not just compliance and clarity, but a gateway to the other apps out there 
who are in the business advisory space helping clients. So what about our operational systems? Where are we along, along those lines? And we can go down through each of these and have a, 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 a valuable point and a valuable discussion point with our team. And we can look at uh, how can we can actually help them. Now, you can see how this plan can be done really, really fast and quick and simple. And it depends on the quality of conversation with the quality of the team member, maybe how good that action plan is, but certainly everyone on our team can get involved. So it's a simple gap analysis, where the client is now, where they could get to, what the gap is, and how to close it. And that's a really, really valuable tool that we can actually uh, work with our clients. And, and again, how simple it is to be able to develop that so, so, so quickly. Now that plan is stored um, within Clarity in our plans. Again, we can flick back to the numbers and have a talk with them where they are now and where they could get to. And for those of our clients that don't really understand the importance of some of this and, and how, how it can have a massive impact on their business, and so the team don't get stumped again, it's like, why do I need to write a system? What's the business plan? Why are cash days? Why do I need core values? And we're building out this business university for the team. Now, this isn't a replacement for Google. This is purely tools and tips to be able to help the accountant help the small business owner understand the importance of these numbers and the issues we're raising within the Clarity platform. We're also building out an advisory university and I'm gonna show you the tools and tips that we've got offline that we're actually gonna be digitalizing and putting within the platform to be able to help your team even further. I just wanted to quickly show you the documents area within the platform now. And this is built, sorry, do we have any more, answer, any more questions on those key numbers and the action plan, Amy? Before um, I move on? You, I think you're about to answer one in about two seconds. Um, but there was also um, a question about, um, are, are we able to link clients' numbers to some industry benchmarks or benchmarking at all? But I think, uh, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Stay tuned. We're looking at the, the setting up of a client here is really, really simple. It takes about two or three minutes to map a client from zero or QuickBooks. And we're building the AI on that and improving it all the time. Now, we do ask you for other information, and that's purely because we want to benchmark the data going forward. So we want you to be able to have a tool to be able to compare your clients in their industry, in their area, by industry, by total. And so those questions primarily are to help us with benchmarking going forward. But that's in a, that's in a future release. Um, and I will be getting to those other questions too, I know, I'm sure. Um, this is uh, the, the document storage in the government docu governance document area. Now, this is a traditional data room, as you would expect a data room to look like. And we've built it structured. And so you'll see about all the things that you should have in place to build a better business. And for example, in the finance assets section, we understand naturally there would be annual accounts, management accounts, tax valuations, etc. When we look at things like brand and culture, we can see there's areas for and signposts for brand guidelines, core values, mission, purpose, vision, and um, all the things that a business should have in place to be more successful. For example, in team, we're looking at contracts and organizational charts and appraisal systems and training. So we get all the things that you should have in place for, for a good business. Now we know as accountants that income follows assets. We need to have assets in an organization to generate income. And when we're talking about assets here, we're not necessarily talking about tables and chairs. We're talking about IP, we're talking about systems, processes, databases, algorithms, just, I mean, the, 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 it's, it's endless what a business needs to put in place to create a better business. Now, at the moment, it's built around a structured data room. We are going to put a nice user interface over the top and make it simple to play this game of business and to be actually able to complete the data room as you're going along. These uh, data, uh, it's very easy to upload a document, very simple to upload the document, and we can actually digitally sign that document using chain technology. So every user of Clarity is given a, a unique online digital identifier, which is completely independent of, of any reference to their name or, or any personal details. And that's what they use to, to create a smart contract around the signature process so that we can see every document that goes into the data room, who uploaded it, who signed it, when they signed it, who deleted it, effectively giving a complete audit trail over the important governance documents that you need within an organization. So that if you do go for funding and you open up certain elements of, of the data room to whom you want, when you want, they can see what important documents are there, who's uploaded them, when they were uploaded, and it gives a complete audit trail and, and really drives down the cost of due diligence on funding and on, and on exit or on investment. So those in a whistle-stop tour is a, a very quick uh, visit of, of Clarity. 
I hope you can see how easy it is to have conversations with clients around their numbers, how easy it is to be able to show them what they can do in their business and make simple changes, well, how we can actually create an action plan for them, again, very, very quickly and simply, and how we can help them using an online structured data room actually take it to the next level and build a better, more stronger business um, using all the things that we're able to do as, a, a, as an accountant to be able to help them. So to, to stop the screen share and to flick back to the presentation because we've got some more really goodies to, to go through with you. Um, so we've been through Clarity, we've seen it, just a very quick recap. Mobile first, so it's built to work on laptops, on iPhones, on uh, iPads and, and uh, tablet devices as well as desktop. It's cloud connected, syncs in automatically to Zero and QuickBooks online. It's a, about your seven key numbers and where you are now. Those seven key numbers are really valuable to every type of business. We have a huge amount of content online, by the way. We do a lot of educational web, uh, web events and uh, blog posts. And if you want to find out any more information about the seven numbers and how to work with your clients around the seven numbers, then we can either do that bespoke training for you or you can just see your educational content around uh, how to have conversations with clients around these numbers. So again, we can see very clearly how we can make a massive difference to their bottom line. And this helps us with positioning our firm. So why it's important to work with us. So if we're working with a prospect, we don't need to give away IP in the first meeting. We can say to, our, to, the, to the prospect, our clients tend to increase their revenue by 5.7% per annum. If we do that for you, this is what it means to work with us. And this is why you should be working with us. It also helps, as I said, with segmenting your existing client base to understand who's important to work with first. It helps you with pricing because although I don't recommend you value price, let's say 10% of what we're going to deliver for you here, I certainly think you should be looking at menu pricing a package based around 10% of the value you're creating. So feeling that the client has a bit more control. I think value pricing on a profit improvement tends to get a little tricky sometimes in that conversation piece, but certainly creating a value-based package around 10% of, of, of what you're going to say for your client is a great way to go. And again, it's a quantifiable value proposition. So again, helping them create a clear strategy, uh, building an online data room using blockchain verification and giving them complete control over their data. The data stored on Amazon Web Services, the same as Zero and QuickBooks, the same as Companies House in the UK. This is secure, solid storage where they've got control over who gets access to their data and when. And it's all around building a business based on the seven key business assets and how they can put in place the right documentation to be able to support that. Um, and again, the business university and the advisor university, hopefully helping you overcome the five big things that small business owners are looking for you, uh, for, from you and being you using heavy lifting and the technology to be able to do that to dramatically make a massive difference to your clients. Okay, Amy, do we have a, 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 any questions? Um, just a couple of um, yep. uh, tips that I'm writing down for the wish list. So in things like um, being able to search documents, et cetera. So um, um, AZ, I don't know if AZ mentioned it at the beginning, but we're a fairly new app, so we're improving the tech and the the uh, interface. It's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're good to go, AZ. Like, you're good to go. Good to go. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. so. I really wanted to take you through the levels of business advisory here because I think it's important when we talk business advisory, what the heck is business advisory? And we've built packages around these five different levels because I've been in practice myself. I know how difficult it is to commercialize technology. We've done that for you. We've created the packages and suggested prices so that you can take them out of the box and roll with them. And again, advisory isn't zero to hero. It's not a, a binary zero or not. It's a curve like everything else. And you can choose where you want to be on that curve and how much you want to do. Now, you can see quite clearly here that in each of these levels, it's about getting the entire team involved. Awareness, for example, knowing where your clients are now, where they want to and what the gap is, is a beautiful way for you to be able to, to talk to your clients and help them take the first step on the advisory journey, working with them to keep them accountable. There was a study done in the US by a university in the US and it said that small business owners that wrote down their goals and were held accountable achieved 78% more. Now that's massive. Now that's 78% more of general goals. If you're working with your clients as an accountant on their right goals, can you just imagine what 78% would do? And basically this university in California did the survey because of this theoretical uh, Harvard study that existed about goal setting and it actually never happened. It was just one of those... Um, 
those uh, tall wives uh, tales. So this has actually been done and it shows accountability is really, really critical. And if you think about it, every business has a world, every athlete has a world-class coach. Um, and that coach, not necessarily there to help them hit or kick the ball better, but who, somebody who knows them, knows their weaknesses and strengths, knows where they want to get to, gives them the nudge, keeps them focused, helps them keep them accountable. That's what you can do for your clients and have a massive impact on them. Because we all know when we go to an event, we get carried away, we write down 30 action points and we come back into our office and suddenly we got the team screaming at us and clients are screaming at us and all the great things that we were going to do tend to slip down the list. Well, our clients are just the same. So we need to help them keep focused. We need them to understand the importance, what the difference to profit and cash is here for these actions and help them accountable. And, and that way we can help them have a massive impact on their bottom line. Then we're stepping up to insights. So giving them an understanding of what's possible, why others are achieving success, how they could move their numbers. What would that do for them? And again, you can see we can use technology and clarity to do this and we can get the entire team involved. It's not always down to managers and partners to have these conversations. And then stepping it up a notch, getting all those apps involved, Fathom, Futurely, Spotlight, you know, all the Fs, Float, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of them. Um, getting all of those involved to help you with a planning and get your clients to understand the importance of planning, scenario planning, sensitivity analysis, what happens if, getting them involved in understanding how everything in their business fits together, the financial model. And then you can clearly see that one to four can be done by anybody on the team. It's possibly only the fifth piece on top, the consulting, the implementation, which might need uh, some, gray, uh, some gray hairs to be able to get involved in those discussions. Although we should be involving the team there too. It might be that you say consulting is not for us, or we have a partnership with a consultant or a business coach, or maybe we have um, uh, other firms that help us do that. Maybe we choose just to do one to four, but I don't want you thinking when I think business advisory, I'm thinking management guru, Baines consulting, and I can't do that. I don't want you thinking that. I want you to think that this is something that all of your team inherently has the skills to be able to get involved with and using tools like Clarity, you can make a massive difference. Now I talked about how we were building out the business, the advisory university. Well, we got a Clarity advisory process, which was built on and, and on the foundations that I used to use in my firm, obviously changed for IP reasons and for uh, sale reasons. Um, so it's different, but it's, it's, it's based on that. And we're gonna be showing you in each of these areas. So understanding where they are now, understanding where they want to get to, helping them install management reporting, helping them accountable with either informally or formally and helping them scale up how we can help you as an accounting firm actually deliver on the ground business advisory services and how we can get the other apps involved. For example, Fathom for reporting, KPIs, how we can help you with Spotlight and Futurely and how all those apps now have a place and fit together. And it shows you how as a firm you can really drive your business advisory services forward. Um, and again, looking at that tech perspective, uh, this is a, 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 an ability for you to see how the tech all fits in together. So us using real-time bank feeds with automation and whether that's Receipt Bank or HubDoc or Auto Entry, feeding into QuickBooks and, and Zero, getting all the data in here, and then having that clarity starter conversation, which is that, where are you now? Where could you get to? What's the gap and how do we close it? Using a pricing tool to be able to help you deliver awareness accountability. And that can be done by all the team. It's not necessarily down to managers and partners anymore. And we can see how that we can scale that up and ramp that up a notch. And by using the Clarity Conversation Starter with all the existing advisory apps that are out there, together with our advisory process and the Clarity Data Room, together we can then move forward into insights and planning. And you can see how the team members fit within that process. And again, involving the team across the entire, uh, process, the, 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 the entire delivery. And again, if you want to go up a further notch, then we can use the entire app ecosystem and together with all that we've done in the past and using either our consulting modules or your own bespoke modules, because if you've already got an advisory process, you'll see how this creates a funnel for you and it dovetails all those clients up and, and filters them up to that beautiful advisory service you already have. And if you don't, then you can use ours. So this is out of the box stuff. There's no serious setup here. You can actually take the heavy lifting and the years of experience we've had in business advisory and just take it like that and run with it. So a great way for you to be able to step up the notches and be able to help from advisory. And again, just very quickly, we have done pricing on this. We have a lot of uh, uh, web events on this. So I'm not going to go into the detail on this. 
I just want to zoom in on two areas very, very quickly. I want to show you that just by running through those seven key numbers twice a year, where they are now, where they could get to, and creating an action plan, and having a monthly accountability call, just those two things done by a frontline team member in anybody's money is worth 157 pounds a month. Now, that's at a frontline team member. If a manager or a partner is doing it, then obviously we'd expect a lot higher here. But that's for 12 hours work, 157 pounds a month, and we can take those clients that were paying us 700 and 1,000 pounds for a set of accounts, and we can actually double the revenue by giving them not what they hate, but actually what they really, really want from you. Help in growing their business, help in understanding the numbers, and help in helping them create more profit. So again, we've done all of that for you. And you know, we've also done some heavy lifting here as well, again, from an actual implementation perspective, because I know how busy you guys are. I've been there. We want to take all that off you, and we've developed advisor uh, packages so that we can go in, take the hassle from you, train your team, uh, get the implementation started and kick started and show you how to make money quickly from Clarity so that the team can get involved and, and take this going forward. And you might expect with all that we're delivering for this to be crazy money, but you can see here from a starter package for just under, for two pounds a client a month, you can have a massive impact on what you can do for your clients. Clearly to get involved in, in the more expensive uh, um, online data room, they need to pay a little bit more, but then of course you're charging them a hell of a lot more. So your return on investment is getting even higher. So again, online, just go to clarity-hq.com. You can see all the details on our partner programs and all this, the, the pricing. It's completely flexible. We want you to sign up for a free trial, 14 days, and in, during that free trial, we'll be able to help guide you to actually make Clarity work for you because we can then create a bespoke program for you that'll help you implement it quickly, help you commercialize it quickly, help train the team, and actually help get a return fast from this program. Now, if you're interested in us getting involved straight away with you, because some of our members have said, I don't want the free trial, I actually want you to come and do this because this is dynamite for our business. So just get going then send, if you just put in the chat box, Amy will get in contact with you straight away. And you'll always get your 14 days free. So don't worry about that. You'll still get your 14 days free, but it just means we kickstart the implementation with you and we just get you moving faster. So if that works for you, then great. If you want to sign up for a free trial, then do that too, because during that free trial, we'll be able to help you understand what you need to be doing, when you need to be doing it, and how we can help you make money. So sign up for the free trial or t type in the comments bar that you want us to come on, help you, or to give you a more in-depth demo. And I'm gonna stay on with Paul, by the way, so I'm not going anywhere, so you can ask me questions and we can go through some nitty gritty if you want at the end. Get 10 clients on, or 11 actually would be great. Get 11 clients on, I'm gonna change that slide. Get 11 clients on, it's free. Put them on for the trial have a conversation with those clients and see if you can sell accountability to one of them. Because if you do that, you're gonna make a massive return for your clients and then it's just rinse and repeat. Great, well, okay, so um, I want to now talk to you quickly and then introduce my star guest, my extra special guest here, who's gonna put all of this in context for us and is gonna just show us how important it is to actually make a massive difference and how we can quite simply do that. And at Clarity, today as a thank you, and normally we do this at the end, but I thought it was a good positioning point here um, and a good intro to Paul. So as a thank you and to show you how we actually take action, this is showing how we use the UN SDGs to make a difference in our, in our business. So as a thank you for your patience, for listening to me, because I do blab a lot, uh, I want to, on behalf of each and every one of you, provide a day's education to protect a girl from being trafficked in Cambodia. That's through free to shine which is an amazing organization and we've done that through our partnership with buy one give one so thank you so much for those of you who've listened to me and had a deep dive into clarity i'm going to hand you to paul who's going to wow and woo and completely transform <laughs> your thinking but both of us are going to stay on here to answer your questions Paul. Oh, uh, <laughs> thank you very much by the way i've got to say that um, if i wasn't here as a panelist like i am right now uh, I would be jumping on that uh, on that chat right now. And it seemed to me that you gave me two options. And I just want to clarify for everybody, just before we get talking uh, about the other things here, that if I were there, I'd want to type in fast if I want to get started fast, or I'd want to type in free. I wouldn't want to sit there and not type in anything. 
So be like me, jump in and do something. And whilst people are doing that, so just fast feel free. Ainsley, can you just go back to the to to the um uh the the snapshot the snapshot screen? Can you just do that uh, quickly for me uh, in in some way, shape, or form? Uh, because I want everybody on the call uh, to just imagine what it's like. Thank you. What it's like right now? Imagine a client is coming in this afternoon, and instead of saying, "Here are the accounts." Why don't you say, let's just have a look at this in a different way and just imagine what that simple question will do. I mean, you'll truly be serving the client in a different way. So uh, this is just an amazing thing, which is essentially I've been talking about since 1992. And to see it unfold like this is just an astonishing thing. So once again, uh, give the guys at Clarity some feedback. Let them know, you know, go in and free or fast, whatever it is you want to do. Uh, even interested uh, would be an interesting response. Plus, it lets me see that you're still there as well. So go for that if you will. So Ainsley, uh, let me see. I want to jump in and share my screen uh, really quickly here. Uh, and uh, again, thank you uh, so much for, uh, for having me there or here, I should say. Let me just share my screen. Uh, for uh, Where am I going to do that? Right here. Here we go. Um, that will stop your sharing, I think. And by the way, uh, everybody on the call right now, I'm going to share a screen that I don't normally share. But here I am in London in a place called Covent Garden. And you can see right there that I should be coming at you pretty fast. 26.1 megabits per second download and to you at 32.8. So what I'd love you to do if you can is just jump up on that chat again and let me know that you're hearing me loud and clear uh, if you can. So just, yep, yes or whatever, or there's some uh, some um, clips, I don't know. But anyway, do let me know. Thank you, I'm seeing some people coming up on the chat. Let's have a look what you're saying. Uh, oh, it looks like it's all uh, all good, which is uh, which is great, fantastic. And uh, then I'll share some different ways. Thanks, Peter, thanks, Dion. Uh, really, really good. So let's do this, let's change my share. Uh, if I can do that and get into something really, really interesting. Uh, and by the way, keep those uh, things coming on the chat if you would, and make sure that you get a notepad and a pencil because you are certainly going to need that uh, as we go through. And by the way, I think you're probably seeing my emails right now. So let me just change what I'm showing you um, and share it in a different way. Here we go. Uh, so I know you know I've got lots of emails to answer on that plane tonight, haven't I? Uh, so, uh, Ains, let me see where I'm going to go. Uh, here we go. We should be doing it round about, here we go, round about now. Stay tuned. So interesting doing this in a hotel foyer, by the way. So, <laughs> here we go. Uh, so, yes, we are now doing it, I think. Uh, you're seeing all sorts of things that I shouldn't be sharing, and I'm not sure why that's happening, but stay tuned because now we are going to do it in a different way. Ainsy, can you just... Uh, let me know, or perhaps some, you could let me know uh, on the uh, on the chat. Uh, you're seeing a little sort of hourglass in the left hand side, and you're going to be talking. We're going to be talking about what's going to happen. Uh, thanks, uh, Rochelle. We're going to we're going to be talking about what's going to happen as a result of you taking time with me now. And keep that chat going for all the charity guys, uh, charity guys, clarity guys, uh, if you will. So here are four things that are going to happen in the next uh, what in the next 25 minutes or so. We're going to give you some interesting ideas on top of what Ainsley has been sharing to allow you to attract and retain seriously great clients, to attract and retain seriously fantastic team members. And importantly, Ainsley on that last slide was talking about how you create a great impact in our world. We're going to show you how you do that in your community and in our world. And we're going to show you how you can live, leverage, and leave a legacy of which you are extremely proud. So do let me know again if this is coming through okay. Thanks very much for doing that. So, and by the way, hopefully by the, uh, by the end of our time together, you're going to be saying, wow, this is really transformed where we where we thought about our business going and again lots of notes you may even want to get a phone handy because there's a screen that you might want to take a photograph of as we go through so what's actually happening is as you know there is a fundamental shift that is occurring in business and part of the reason for that shift in the way in which people are doing business i think it's actually happened Ainsley since about 2008. We've seen this kind of uptick 
going on where people are really understanding, you know, in around 2008, we had the global financial crisis. Before that, we had the greed is good movement. And we know that it didn't work too well, as you know. And so since that time, including right now, of course, we are seeing this hockey stick thing happening where people are adding more meaning and purpose uh, to what they're doing. And one of the things that Ainsley and the guys at Clary are doing are making that possible. And we're going to add to that, as you will see. And we want to, I want to take you back just for a moment to something very, very significant that happened in 2015. In fact, let's just go back to this specific day. It happened on the 23rd of September, 2015. And Ainsley touched on this and very kindly said, oh, let, let's let Paul go deeper. So here's some deeper thoughts as to what happened that day. I remember that I was sitting at home in Singapore. It was around 10.40 at night. And what was happening in this building in Geneva was being live streamed. And finally at 10.40, live stream came on, and this guy that you see here was live on, on my screen. That's, of course, Sir Richard Branson. And Branson was on the stage in that United Nations building in Geneva, together with some people that you would know. Bill Gates was there, you know, Paul Polman was there from Unilever, various UN uh, uh, people were there, uh, some really interesting business luminaries as well. And Branson began his little conversation that day by saying a couple of things. One, I don't spend too much time at the United Nations. In fact, it's the first time I've been here. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to explore this next great frontier where the boundaries between work and higher purpose are merging into one. We're doing good really is good for business. And he said, that what I'm, the reason I'm here today is because this is a very important day. It's the first time in history, he said, when the United Nations has acknowledged that which we as business owners and entrepreneurs know to be true. But until today, the world body has never acknowledged it. And he said, what they are saying and coming out and saying today is, and please listen to this, is governments do not change our world. Just, now just get the significance of that. That's the world body saying that. And Branson said, you and I know that to be true. Now, governments can enable that being, that, that happening, but it is businesses and business owners and their teams who fundamentally change our world. And he said, the reason this is a significant day is because I'm here and I'm so pleased to be launching these things. These are the things that Ainsley talked about a little earlier on or touched on. These are the SDGs, the so-called Sustainable Development Goals. Some people call them the Global Goals. 17 things which we have to, please understand that word, have to, or that phrase, achieve by 2030. Now, Ainsley, if it's okay with you, I'm gonna ask people just to key something in on the chat. Um, because uh, when I was uh, speaking at QBC, uh, uh, in San Jose last November, and by the way, I'm going to be there uh, in a couple of weeks uh, doing a couple of sessions. I asked people uh, that were there, indeed you were in the audience, how many of us had actually knew of these SDGs. And surprising, well, I, I'll tell you what the number was in the audience that we, tracked, uh, that we spoke to that day, but what I am really, really keen to know is whether you are currently aware of the significance of these things, the sustainable uh, development goals. It might be the first time you've heard of them. It might be, you know, it might be more time. If it's the first time or whatever, let me know in the chat. Please, please, please let me know. Go first, last, whatever. Let, 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 oh, sorry, first, second, third, whatever. Let me know in the chat uh, because very, very, very important. Thanks, Jeff. I know you're aware because we spent a couple of days together just over these last two days. Oh, Peter, interestingly, Elliot saying, heard of them. Uh, very, very good. Keep coming, keep coming. So whilst you're thinking of your response, it's a pretty simple response. It's the first time, oh, Simon says, of course, you're an AVN member. Yes, I've heard about them previously. Awesome. But what I'm going to do in a moment is going to give you a totally different way of thinking about these goals. Let me get back to Sir Richard. At that time, he said, businesses must become, or business must become real force for good in our world. I want to take that a little stage further for you, because if that is true, then 
for a long, long time now, I've been talking since 1992 about this fundamental point. Accountants change lives. There is no business in the world that so underpins what happens in business than the business part. That is to say, your accountancy business. Now, hopefully, Andy, I just got a message on my screen. Amy, can you uh, let me know that you're still hearing my sound? Could you let me know if that's uh, actually happening? Yes. Uh, so, businesses must become the real force for good in the world. And I believe strongly that the profession must lead that charge. Absolutely, absolutely must. And I think that business but in fact it's a pathway for your business or business in general but specifically your business and it's a pathway for humanity again if you could let me know that you're hearing this that would be really wonderful because i'm getting all sorts of messages on my screen that say you may not be let me know so this is a pathway for humanity so Let's go a stage further. I don't know whether you've ever considered what 6,000 accountants look like. This is actually 6,000 accountants uh, in Sydney, in November, Sydney, Australia, in November 2018. And it turned out that the final speaker at this accountants, uh, in the International Accountants Conference, was actually talking about what you and I have just been discussing here notably uh, the global goals. And he said, to use an Obamaism, he said, I, I, having gone through the global goals, he said, the reality is that we must lead that charge. And I want you to sort of put your hands up if you believe that we indeed can. So let's do the Obamaism, he said, just put your hands up if you agree with this. Yes, we can. That is to say, yes, we can lead that charge. Now, whilst we may not have 6,000 uh, firms on this particular web event, I want you to play a part in that. Just put up on the screen, yes, we can. If you believe, A, that business must become the real force for good in our world, and if you, as a member of the profession, really can lead that charge. Go ahead, thanks, Jeff. Yes, we can which also lets me know that you're actually hearing me. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> yeah, got it. All righty. Now, with that in mind, thanks for doing that. Put up there. Yes, we can. There you go. Let's go a little stage further. And this is all about connection, because when you look at those goals and the way in which they're currently described up on the screen right there, they can be a little hard to connect with. So our good friends at the government in Singapore uh, through the uh, uh, the uh, sovereign fund in Singapore, recently said, how can we make these things even more connected so that we make sure that we actually do hit them as a human race by 2030? And they said, what if we? What would happen if we applied an ABC to this? And you might want to take some screenshots on this. They said, let's break it down into active economy, beautiful society, and clean earth. And then they said, let's put some phrases around the each one of these things. And so they said, that top one, active economy. What, is, what does it mean? It means productive jobs, sustainable cities, and fulfilling lives. What about the next one? What about beautiful society? Well, resilient individuals, inclusive communities, and a just society. Just pause for a minute and think about what's going on here. And then the clean earth. There are three lovely things there. Look at this, it's so simple. Fresh air, clean water, and cool world. I want you to imagine sitting in front of this right now with, well, let me put it another way. Do you know any business in the world that would not say, you know what, that's a very, very smart thing and I would like to be a part of that. And we're gonna show you how you can make your clients become a part of that. By the way, here is one of the, the architects of the global goals. This is Paul Pullman, uh, former CEO of Unilever until June this year. And by the way, one of the guys who wrote the foreword for our latest book and uh, chairman of the International Chamber of Commerce. And you may remember that about three weeks ago, there was something happening in New York. A uh, young Greta, Greta Thunberg from uh, uh, Sweden was there and Paul Pullman was there. And this is what he had to say about what you and I have just been discussing. He said this, this is probably the biggest business opportunity we have seen in the history of mankind. 
And that's why I want you to stop and pause and grab just how important this is. And what we're gonna show you is how you would work with this in relation to your clients. And one of the things Ainsley mentioned earlier on was this whole concept of leaving a legacy. And I wanna delve a little deeper into that if I might. Whenever we use the term leaving a legacy, it's, it's, like, it's like as if we had a choice as to whether we leave a legacy. We don't have a choice. We are going to leave one. The question is, what is that legacy going to be? Is it going to be a legacy of consumption? Is it going to be a legacy of contribution? And what's really interesting about that is, particularly in the English language at least, we can play with it to show you how you can make sure that it's the legacy you actually want to leave. Just by looking at the L's right there, we can do this. We can plug in a few more things. You see, I think it's not about leaving a legacy. I think it's about, I say I think, there are 3,000 businesses now around the world who are part of this, who are literally doing this every day, living a legacy. And more importantly, perhaps, particularly members of the accounting profession are recognizing that they have a responsibility somewhat to actually leverage this idea of legacy. Let me just quickly show you how you might want to do that in your firm. So once you're leaving a legacy, how would you do that? Well, that's pretty clear, isn't it? You do it by making sure that you do it in your firm. What about living a legacy? How do you do that? Well, the best way I know of doing that is to embed it in your firm. You heard Ainsley say essentially this, every time you deal with clarity, they make sure something great happens in our world. And that's what we mean by embedding it. Put it another way, we want it to bake it in to the very core. And you'll see some examples of how you do that in just a moment. What about leveraging a legacy? Well, that's an obvious one, isn't it? It's doing it with your clients so that you can use this unique trusted advisor position that you have to make sure that these goals that we're talking about, which we have to achieve by 2030, actually get hit by you leveraging your legacy. So let's go a little further on that. It turns out that this path for purpose or this push for purpose uh, that we talked about before, it turns out that there are some people that were thinking about this without realizing they were thinking about it a little bit before 2008. And specifically what I want you to do is just come back with me now to 2007. Um, situation was that I was in a mentoring session with a particular person. You'll see her on your screen right now. This is the founder of B1G1, or Buy One, Give One, as it was called at that time. This is Masami Sato. And you would know that in, 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 uh, in mentoring sessions, it's usually the mentor who asks the questions of the mentee. At this particular time, she came, and it was obvious that she'd been thinking about some things. And she said, can I just ask you two questions? So I said, sure, sure. Thanks, Dion. And said, first question, I want you to imagine this. She said, what if every time business was done, something great happened in our world? Interesting thought. Just think about that for a minute. What if every time business was done, something great happened in our world? Just imagine that world. And then she said, what if we could actually turn that into a movement and let business owners put doing great things right at the heart of their businesses? I remember saying, wow, that's a really cool idea. Explain to me how it might work. And that was when Masami said, well, you know, why don't we work together on this? And so it took a long time to make those two simple things that you see on your screen happen. Specifically, it took three years, hence the link to 2010 that I, I, that I showed you on the screen. And now let's have a look at what's been happening. Now there are, as a result of that tiny, tiny little idea, there are now some 3,000 plus, let me show you, some 3,000 plus business owners around the world who are part of this movement. And because Cool. is now 
Oh. Yeah, go ahead, Amy. Yeah, go ahead. I can hear you. I lost you for a second, but now I can hear you again. Apologies. Okay. Thank you for letting me know. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So every single one of those members can now say, every time we do business together, something great happens. And by the way, have a look at this. This, are the, these are, you see on the screen right there, right now, the number of impacts that those members together with us have made. 194 million giving impacts. Isn't that huge? Just imagine that you could be a part of that physically making impacts just as a result of doing the things that you currently do. And as I said, all of those BMG1 members can now say, you could say, every time someone does business with you, something great happens in our world. Just imagine how that would feel. Just imagine what that does to the kind of team members that you attract as well. Let me give you an example, or several examples actually. So you could say, Ainsley actually was one of the first people to say this. So you could say, every time we send an email, a child in need gets access to an e-learning program that changes their life. Consider that. Or you could say, whenever we create a new client, and I'm actually gonna show you this, Kofi, online, just in a month. 18 homeless people get a nutritious meal. Or imagine you could say, whenever a client gives us great feedback, we help run or a farmer run their beekeeping business. And all these things you can see on the right hand side of the screen are up to you to determine. And you'll see how you do that in just a minute. Or you could say, whenever someone attends our workshops, 57, you're meaning your own workshops, 57 children get access to pure life saving water. Or you could do something like this. You see, you get the idea it's when this, then this. And so let me show you another way of thinking about this. Tonight, I'm going to get uh, on a flight. And I'm going to show you how I do that. But let me show you, first of all, not how I get on the flight, but what happens when I get on the flight. Here are some typical whens, so you can see how you might bake them in. Some triggers, if you will. Whenever someone visits your website, whenever someone pays you on time, when you complete a return. You could do this for birthdays. You could do this for getting positive feedback, completing a project. You could do this for all of the things that you see on the right hand side. Thanks, Jeff, of, uh, of, uh, your, uh, of your screen right there. And let me show you how that works. Because now there are over 600 high impact projects to choose from. And I'll tell you, by the way, in a moment, how those projects get selected. So have a look at this. If you've ever bought something from Amazon, this might look familiar because it's kind of like buying a book on Amazon. The difference is what we're doing is effectively looking at impacts. And this screen will keep going and going and going and going. So what we might do is stop it in just a second and let's see how we might do something. Let's see where we can stop it. Uh, I think we might have a look at a little cow coming up here. There we go. Let's have a look at this cow. So we can go in and say, look at that. <laughs> I can, and by the way, here's the UN goal that that hits, goal number 15. And look at that, for 20 cents, I can actually give a meal a pay for a day. And I can just click on it, add it uh, to the cart right up there. And then it drops into the cart and I can say, well, one is a bit small. Let's do 18 of them or 30 or whatever the number is. So let's do it for a month. And then we proceed to pay, off it goes, and we do it, bang, there we do, and bang, we press continue, and then we get some nice things that we can share up on social media if we so wish to, as you can see right there. You can share that right out. Now, don't worry for the moment about getting, uh, uh, doing the social media shares, but have a look, and by the way, you can see there, that's a typical screen where we've created what are called giving stories. And I want to let you know how easy this is. So I promised Kofi earlier on that we'd actually look at how we could do that. And this is an existing case, funnily enough, Ainsley, in New York. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So here's a client, Stuart Mortman, in uh, New York. And what he's done as a trigger is when we complete a tax return. So now he's just put that in as the trigger. Now he clicks in the picture of the tax return uploads it now he happens to choose food why would he choose food as the category stay tuned so what's going to happen now we're going to see all of the food projects if you will and he might even find one that is relevant to new york he does there it is right there 
you can see here the global goals that it's in that is impacting zero hunger poverty and responsible consumption and have a look at that 11 cents just 11 cents to actually do that and so now he just completes the giving story by saying 18 of those things are going to get done whenever he completes a tax return now you can see the giving story right there but what's so interesting is what actually happens now from the client's perspective so I want you to imagine, if you would, that you were doing this and you were doing what we call a gratitude certificate to your client. Have a look at how you connect with your client. Have a look at this. You can see it says something tangible that the client gets now. Specifically, we want to thank you for being a client. You can read uh, the whole thing right there. Thank you, Kofi. And then have a look down the bottom. We're thrilled to be serving you. And we're especially pleased that we can do something great when we do business together. Our simple goal here, imagine your firm being able to say this. Our simple goal here is to keep on making great things happen in our world together. How would you feel? Just type up on the chat. How would you feel if your firm could actually do something like this? every time you did something in your business. How would you feel? Let me know, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> and by the way, it's profound. Thank you, Peter. And have a look at this, Peter. This is where, and everybody for that matter, this is something that's quite amazing. Because when you're part of V1G1, we actually track every single giving that you do. Have a look at this. I'm going to show you a, a simple website and by the way, this is not our website. This is the website of a B1G1 member. So have a look at this. You'll love it. This member happens to be in the training business. We go up into the, but it could be you. Up we go into the impact page. You can see there why the impacts. Go across the left-hand page. You'll see how we're tracking their impacts in real time. Now looking at the map. And look at how we're talking about this. It's the number of impacts that are being created. It's got nothing to do with the money that you're giving. It's a number of impacts. And then, and that's on your website automatically, by the way. And then look at this. We're tracking that back into the UN Global Goals. I was talking with a so-called CSR consultant the other day, and they said, oh my goodness, if we were able to show this to our clients, we would be charging them the number she said was $38,000 to do something like this. But the good news is you don't do anything like that. But let me know what you, what you, what, how you're feeling up on the screen. Thanks, Peter. Profound is a great way of saying it. By the way, here, let me give you, a, let me know if you're excited by what you see. Go ahead. Let me know. Just look. Yeah, excited. Whatever it is, I'd love to, uh, to see how you're feeling about this. So make sure you do jump up on that screen. Let us know that we are seriously connecting. Thank you, Peter. Amy, well, I know you're excited about it. Uh, Rochelle, thank you so much. Um, it really is exciting, isn't it? And what, what you can start to see is how we're living to that promise that we made right up front. So let's deal with that excitement. By the way, look at this. You can do it this way. I mentioned I'm getting on a flight <laughs> not, not too long, actually, from now. And what I do, I know that flying is bad, but I don't understand carbon offsets, but I do understand planting forest trees is good. And so we just calculate how long the flight is, which is pretty simple. It's actually 13 hours uh, tonight. And so then I'll be using B1G1 just to go online and plant four times 13 forest trees. That's part of how you can integrate B1G1 into everything you do. And those of us who have team members, have a look at what this does. I promised you that you'd be able to, to add and retain really fantastic team members. Here's part of the reason why. Look at this. This is a bookkeeping business, actually, in Sydney in Australia. They're giving to local projects, which we recommend as well. But have a look at how they're using B1G1. Look at this. Look at that. Every team member has re selected their own global goals that are important to them. And we're counting those goals up, just like you saw before. There's the map, and have a look at this. A business that's got not a revenue goal, but a giving impact goal. And there are now so many of them in B1G1. And again, hopefully, 
you're excited about what you're seeing here and you're going to want to know how you can be a part of this and how you can make sure that you help your clients do great things. Now, it's possible, of course, to get excited about the technology and you know what we can do and the feelings we have ourselves. But just let's pause for literally two minutes and look at this from a, like a, a helicopter view. What's going on as a result of B1G1? And what can you help make sure happens in our world? Take a look at this. I think you'll love it. Take a look at some of the impacts here now. <laughs> oh, well, I know some of you had volume, uh, but thankfully it was subtitled as well. But as Ainsley said, thank you for watching that, by the way. As Ainsley said, we're going to make sure and get that to you. But again, I hope you got the kind of idea that this is about making a huge difference in our world by doing the things that you normally do. So if you liked what you saw up there. Would you do this for me? Would you just type up on your up on your chat? Say something like, "This is for us." Or, this seems like it's great. Whatever you want to say, I'd love to know what your feeling is. This is for us. Is a good thing to type up there, by the way. So let me know uh, how you're feeling about this. Very cool. It's good. Thank you, Rochelle. Very very cool. Um, I'm, Paul, I'm Paul. Can I just say I love the juxtaposition of that scary tax return with something so wonderful. So. <laughs> For our clients that maybe go, oh, I don't really like tax or I don't really like accounts, we can say, well, now here's how we can have a massive impact. And you can see the link here. Not only are we doing great things for our clients, we're also now doing great things for the greater world as well. So it's a fantastic ability for us to be able to communicate how we as accountants can save the world, how we can make a massive difference. Oh, Ainsley, thank you. And of course, you've been playing a part in it since, I think, since day one. Uh, which is just amazing. And for all of you putting up there, this is for us. Thank you. So well done. And let me show you how you can actually deliver on that. This is for us. I promised you right up front that we can be doing all of this thing and we can be doing it, but believe it or not, just a dollar a day to be a part of this. In fact, oh, by the way, look at this. Look at this. You remember Ainsley showed you the, the snapshot on the screen? Just imagine what, how people would feel they came into your office and they saw that 
when they were sitting there with you? Have a guess what question they're going to ask you. What are these things? And you're going to tell them how together with you uniquely as their accounting firm, they're going to play a part in making these things happen. So let's show you how you can do this. And I'm going to give you a link so that you can actually explore Kofi. In fact, you might even want to try it because you can try it. And if you don't like it, then guess what? We give you the money back as well. So let's have a look at this. Depending on your size, we wanted to make sure that it was much less than a cup of coffee. So you can just be a part of this, not for that $38,000 that someone mentioned earlier on, but just for a dollar a day. Consider that. Just consider that. And depending on your size, you can see they're on the left-hand side. And these, by the way, are all in US dollars. So what's that, about 80, 80 uh, cents, I guess it would be, in, in the, or euro cents, whatever you call them, uh, here in the United Kingdom. Uh, and here's the link. Very, very simple link. Look at that. B1G1.com forward slash belong. Amy, if you've got a moment, you might just put that up in the chat so people can actually click on that in the chat and go there. Alternatively, if you happen to have a camera, then just take a, a shot of that QR code. Thank you, uh, Amy, that's great. Uh, and that will take you right there. And let me show you what happens when you go there. When you go there, this is what you'll see. Be a part of something bigger. And I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like by, you should never do this live, should you, Ainsley? But let me actually do it live. And so you can see, so there we go. We go down here. And you'll see how you can do it based on that little tiny thing there. You can see how you can do it here annually or monthly. So let's just say you were here. Just and by the way, all you do is just move that little slider right there. Let's put you down here for the moment because someone said earlier on they had small revenue. And you, you said, okay, let's join B1G1 now. And it's so easy for you to do. Then you can see, well, instead of doing it annually, what I'd love to do is I'd love to do it monthly, which is just that $33. Don't worry about this referral code thing. And then all you do is put your first, your, you know, your details in there. Then you click next step. And then, as someone said the other day when I was in uh, a meeting in, uh, in Sydney, what they said was, then this is where the love, they put it this way, this is when the love really begins. And so that's when it really gets exciting, when you're able to actually be doing it live, not just looking in now, but actually doing it live. By the way, here are the seven unique things that you get with B1G1, but there's one thing that you did not expect, which you actually get. So you can match your giving to things that your customers love. Pretty interesting. In other words, if you're dealing with someone in education, you'd make sure that you were giving the education. If you're dealing with a doctor, you'd make sure that you were doing something that was in the medical area. You can choose from all of those projects right there. And by the way, as Ainsley knows, the board of B1G1 rejects nine out of every 10, depending on the month, but nine out of every 10 of the projects that apply to be B1G1. So that means whenever you see a B1G1 project, it actually does what it says. And by the way, for those of you in the US, we just announced that B1G1 is a 5013C. So all of these things now, you can kind of link to uh, tax and stuff like that. And by the way, talking of links, you can actually link it directly to all the things that Ainsley was talking about before. You can link it direct to Zero, direct to any of the apps, directly to Intuit and so on and so forth. You can give from just one cent. Imagine that, just one cent to give a child access to education, one cent to give, an access, give them access to water. And by the way, in B1G1, we didn't talk about this, but 100% of your giving goes where you want it to go. There's nothing that comes off the top. The membership fees that we talked about sustain B1G1. So in fact, we even make up the credit card fees that your bank charges you so that we can always look you in the eye and say, you know, 100% went where you wanted it to go. And you know that's very, very rare. And we think it's never about how much you give. It's always about the impact that you're creating. And as you've seen, you can see every single impact you create through geocoding. It's really, really cool. And point number seven here, you're always in total, total control. And what's the thing that you won't expect that you got, but you will get it? It's this. 
It's a huge thing, a huge, huge thing. And it surprised us, by the way. Here's what people say who are using B1G1. It transforms our business. And when we ask those people, now, why would you say that? That is such a huge call. And they say, by, by embedding B1G1, it shifts the spirit of our business. So this really is something quite profound that you can access, again, for just a dollar a day. And it's all guaranteed as well. So let's go back to where we were again. This requires, I think, a new set of eyes. And hopefully, that Ains has been giving you that, guys, at Clarity, a new way of looking at the relationship that you have with your clients. But I think there's also another set of eyes that we need, and it's this. I saw this in a, in a newspaper uh, headline just in April this year. Take a look at it. We've not inherited the world from our forefathers. We've borrowed it from our children. Just think about that for a moment. And so when you think about that and you, and you think about this, this new set of eyes, let's just look at it from that set of eyes. It's that set of eyes when we need to see what we're doing as a profession, what we're able to do to help our clients change our world by them doing just what they do. And they're having this new relationship with you. So it is all about looking at it through a different set of eyes. And I hope that together with Ainsley and Amy and the, and the team from Clarity, and by the way, thank you so much for staying on all this time. It's just great that you did. That we've given you not just a new set of eyes, but a way of being a part of something bigger. That is being one G1. Just to remind you again where this actually leads, it leads right here. Leaving a legacy, living a legacy, and leveraging it as you do it with your clients. Ainsley, thank you so much for involving me in this. I, I know there were a couple of times when we lost sound and all of that kind of stuff, but let me just stop my share so that we can get back to you and, and so on. Back to you, Ainsley. Thank you so much uh, for letting me do this. And thank you so much for everybody who stayed on probably way after they probably should have gone. <laughs> uh, no, Paul, thank you. I mean, clearly people can see um, from, a, from a clarity perspective where, where clarity has come from and where it's been born from. And it's yeah. been born from our involvement with you from a very, very long time and um, all the work that you did for the profession. But also, we, we took that up a notch and at, at my accounting firm, we wanted to make a massive impact in the world. And through Clarity, we want to make a massive difference for, for our members, for small businesses, but also we want to make a bigger impact in the world again. And so I think you've shown us how easy it is to do that. It's, it's, it is really that simple. Um, and it's, again, it can be done every day in simple ways. And it doesn't mean we have to wait so we've actually made it here to actually make a difference together by doing a small bit every day we can have a massive impact on the world so That's i think it's exactly been, right been, been a joy to, to see to, to have you we didn't actually give a time limit on this we said it was a deep dive so we have gone <laughs> deep um i'm uh if if if, if for, for those on the line we, we are now in unplugged mode so we will <laughs> We'll keep going as long as, um, in fact, we, we probably will continue the conversation. And if you want to step in and join in, then please do. Um, if you want to head away, because we appreciate your time is really, really precious. If you do want to head away, thank you so much for, for spending time with us. If you want any um, information on Clarity, then you can get go to the website clarity-hq.com. So Amy will type that in because um, I don't want to go back to slides again and show you that slide. We are across most of the social media platforms. We, you know, just join us on any of those. If you want to join a free trial, then get started. Just take action, uh, get involved today, and, and then we will guide you and help you from there. If you want to actually circumvent and, and move faster, then just, again, type in faster, and Amy will make sure that we give you the support that you need to do that. For buy one, give one, you've got the link. Uh, honestly, I think for you to be able to join both clarity and, and b1g1 together right, and together. join the dots on that it makes it just makes so much sense <laughs> and, uh, and it, i mean that, that's real transformation right right there right there that, those two right things. there those two things together transforming your clients transforming your own business and transforming the world together well well you, you can't get much more than that and and i think um we'd love for you to join us on the journey and 
clearly when you do that, you get to see a lot more of Paul and I. Um, you might regret <laughs> that, by the way. You might, you, might, you might regret that, but you do get to see uh, Yes, you might. You, might. you, uh, you might. But uh, one of the things that, uh, as I said, happens at the moment you click that little button up there on the long, you're going to be stunned uh, by what you see. Uh, in the B1G1 sense, at least, and I know what well, you've already seen from Ainsley going online uh, with clarity, and you can just imagine in your head getting up tomorrow and going, "Wow, I could, I could do that," and that's going to change the relationship that you have. And as a result, once you plug uh, B1G1 into that, it's going to change our world. Isn't Absolutely. that a great thought? Good. So, making business simple, making advisory simple, and making a difference simple. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thought. <laughs> I wish we'd have thought of that. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so I know Paul is probably. What what time do you need to go, Paul? Are you are you heading off to a flight? Around now? about uh, yes. Uh, around about now is uh, is kind of like a cool time uh, actually, okay. uh, and get back to the family there in Singapore, as you know, because you you do that flight not unfrequently. Uh, so it's about what thirteen or so hours that we have on the plane. So. As I said, that's going to be whatever 13 times four. Is that uh, 70, what's that, 52, something like that? 52 trees are going to get planted as a result of that. <laughs> yeah, so. uh, that, that was a great, great piece of work done by Tim Waite, wasn't it? Tim Bob, just awesome, just awesome. Yeah. And uh, as a result of that, by the way, uh, here in uh, the United Kingdom, it happened, uh, you may not, may not have seen it, but uh, over the weekend, uh, someone was calculating, uh, you know, an individual's impact on the planet. And uh, Steve Pike, whom you know, uh, got up the calculator, being an accountant, and said, my goodness, uh, if we just planted one tree a day, we could actually uh, offset our own impact as well. So, interesting. Uh, Tim, thank you. Look at all those thank yous coming in. Thank you, Elliot. Uh, Kofi, thank you. I promise you. Uh, by the way, uh, you should go have a look at uh, Stuart, uh, Stuart Morgan's website. And uh, Mordfin Group, is it, it is, M-O-R-D-F-I-N. And uh, you can see exactly how they, uh, they are implementing B1G1 and the distinction or the difference uh, that it makes in their clients. And in fact, Stuart might even appreciate a call. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome stuff. Well done, everybody. Thank you for staying so long. Okay. Thank you, Paul. We okay. Really well, I'm going to go to the flight and I'll leave you, uh, I'll, I'll leave you uh, dealing with all these things coming up here. Amy, Bye -bye. as always, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for making it possible. Just Bye. awesome. Okay. Okay. Bye. Catch Bye. you soon. And lots of sun me the children. Bye-bye. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>